Hello and welcome to Manchester Airport. Today we're going to be heading on British Airways on a short domestic flight from here at Manchester all the way down to London Heathrow. The flight today should be about 30 minutes so it's not a long one but it'll be a good way to showcase what the domestic product is like. We're going to be on an A319 which is due in shortly. Enjoy the video. Manchester Airport has these great tunnels linking the terminals on the station. They're inspired by the shape of an aircraft cabin and look really good at night. Unfortunately, these tunnels don't extend to Terminal 3, meaning it's outside to the worst terminal at Manchester. Terminal 3 was opened in 1989 by Diana, Princess of Wales, and comprises of the old Pier A and the newer glass terminal that you can see here. Landside, you have three main areas. The first part in the modern glass building is the checking counters for British Airways and its One World Partners. In the centre of the terminal is the Ryanair section, and then towards security you'll find where what was the check-in area for Flybe. Unfortunately Flybe went under a few days before I filmed this video. Now Manchester Airport is known for its awful security and today, well today was just about the worst security experience that I've had since the last time that I travelled through Manchester. Here's my tray, everything out as required. And here's the queue to get my tray back after it was flagged as suspicious. No, it's not just my tray. 80% or more of the trays that went through this conveyor belt were marked as suspicious. When I collected my tray, after waiting for well over 20 minutes, I was told I should take out my charger in future. Has this happened to you? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, with only a little time to now spare, let's head into the departure lounge. En route I did spot today's aircraft inbound from Heathrow parking up on stand. Here's a closer look at Golf Echo Uniform Papa Tango, our A319 to London. Boarding information was displayed not long after, so I went through the identity checker and headed to the gate. Unfortunately this is gate 141 or it might have been 140, which means there's no seating. So I sat on the floor and stared at this wall for half an hour before boarding actually started. I eventually boarded not long after 3 o'clock and made my way to seat 20F. I pre-booked this seat online and 20F is right above the rear cargo door, just in case you wait to know. Anyway, before we push back, let's have a quick look at the safety card, as you always should when you're flying. Expecting to get underway in the next three or four minutes or so. Quite a short taxi time here to the West New Room in Manchester, no more than 10 minutes or so. And flight time just over 30 minutes to London. I expect smooth conditions, I will switch off the fast seatbelt sign once we find the way here from Manchester. Just a reminder, should we switch it off during the flight, it is a requirement for you to be sat in your seat with your seatbelt security fastened. The weather in London, very similar to what we have here, temperature currently 11 degrees down there, but you have a shower passing through. I'll speak to you again a little bit later with an update to give you more accurate arrival time for the latest weather conditions. But once again, you're all very welcome. Please make yourself comfortable and enjoy the service aboard. Now we're up in the cruise, let's have a look around. Up top you'll find the drop down TV which cycles through to tell you the altitude, time, distance to the destination and the outside air temperature. It also flicks through a map that's really difficult to read and you've also got a reading light and a personal air vent. The seat itself is well padded and fairly comfortable. Legroom is a little bit tight thanks to a lower pocket but the magazines are kept up top. The tray table is full size and adjustable. And in your knee pocket there's a safety card, the flying start envelope and a sick bag. This flight's only 30 minutes but there's plenty to read to keep you occupied if you don't want to look out of the window. In the seat you'll find the buy on board collab menu from M&S and British Airways. Shocker it's a little bit pricey. And with this you can pay with either card or Avios but not cash. And watch out, don't pay with Avios it's an awful way to redeem and use your hard earned miles. 
The seat also features a fully adjustable headrest, which I rate as one of the best headrests that you can get on EU flights. The adjustable ears hold your head in place whilst you're napping, and I love to have a nap. Here's that awful map that I told you about earlier. Kudos to the crew on today's flight, they managed to get up and down the whole cabin and serve everyone who required a beverage or a snack. Not an easy feat on such a short flight. As we dropped into our descent over Oxfordshire, let's look at how much today's flight cost me. I redeemed an Avios Rewards Saver, which are normally in plentiful supply on this route. I opted for the £32.50 option, parting with 2,950 of my Avios points. Our approach into Heathrow today first took us towards Heathrow, where we bounced off and banked left and headed northeast out over Hampstead Heath. We next banked right over Stratford in Greenwich to line up on runway 27 left. This approach I think is one of the best into London and it gives you some stunning views over central London before seeing South London and Richmond Park on the final approach. And that's all for today's short flight. This was my final flight before the UK went into lockdown, but fear not, I do have a backlog of videos yet to edit and post. In the near future, I'm also booked on this BA flight again from Manchester to London, and I'll be comparing the flight pre and post lockdown to see what differences there are and what you can expect when flying in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on that one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.